Hello, everybody. This is Charles Vance, Ninja Cell Secret Warrior right here. And I am very happy to share with you a little bit of, uh, of a, it's really kind of a, it, I want to call it a secret, but it's, it's more like the secret sauce to understanding your personality trait as well as understanding your customers. And the fun thing about this is within this hour, I'm going to teach you how to do that in five minutes literally you're going to meet someone and in five minutes you are going to know what personality trait they are and it all starts by obviously understanding the personality trait that you are as well so today we're going to talk about ninja cell secret number five five we've already gone through four of them and now we're at a point where i'm not going to give you all of the ones that we have done to uh, bore you but there are 20 that are in my book ninja cell secrets and I'd show you the book, but my laptop is sitting on them right now. <laughs> there it is. Wait, there it is. There's the book right there. So anyway, I, I'm having a great time. It's a beautiful day today. So Ninja Seeker number five is the personality traits. And I must disclose that I originally learned this while actually in a network marketing organization called World Ventures. And the trainer, Mark Cassetta, shared this with us out of the blue and we all sat there it was only about 100 120 of us at the time we all sat there with our jaws dropped like how does he do this oh my god that's me oh my god i didn't know that was you and the people that you were sitting right next to maybe it was your brother your wife your girlfriend whatever you now all of a sudden understood the difference between your personality trait and their personality trait and that really made all the difference in the world. Here's, here's the bottom line of the personality trait. Sorry about being a little bit disjointed. Uh, it's, it's a lot of technology going on here. <laughs> so the, um, the first thing you need to understand about personality traits, it's not exactly about knowing what to say and how to, and how to say it. It's more understanding what not to say and especially knowing when to keep your mouth closed. All right, so let's get started. We only have a few minutes to make a first impression. And so by the end of this 45 minutes, really, we're gonna have some fun and I'm going to test you to see if you have actually learned the ninja secret to understanding your personality trait and understanding the one that's in front of you, or maybe if you walk into someone's office. And so I need you to take notes. I need you to write down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you really quick I'm going to share with you the four basic personality traits and there and we're going to use colors that's how I was taught and as we go through this just kind of jot down if it's you know if it pertains to you so you can kind of get an understanding of what color you are so that when uh when we get down to the end you'll be able to really understand who you are and how you're going to interact with the other colors we're going to have some fun at the end because I have slides that you're going to be able to look at the slide and say what color, what personality that person is on the slide and how fast will it take you to do that? Yeah. Isn't that exciting? I think that's gonna be super fun. So let's go ahead and get going. Do, do, do. For some reason, I just moved my, my uh, screen over. Yeah, one of those days. Let's just see if we can get this thing to move the right way. Get up here out of the way, thank you. All right. So what does your prospect want, want to see? What do they want to say? And what do they want to hear? Isn't that a cute picture? I think so. So there are four basic, basic personality traits. And as I said, there is red, blue, yellow, and green. Not any necessary order. As you can see here on the screen, it says yellow, blue, red, and green. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. They are they are interchangeable and no worries. But here's what does matter. Which one are you? And, and remember this word, primarily. Okay, which one are you primarily? Which one, which one do you have the most uh, traits of? Which, which one stands out the most to you? Because trust me, we're all rainbows one way or another. We all have different pieces of personalities, but there's usually one that dominates the other and you'll get, you'll get an understanding of that. So let's just go ahead and jump into it now. I think I am ready. If 
you're ready to say you're ready. So that looks good. I just wish I could get out of that particular screen and move on to the other one. Okay, we're just gonna let it go. All right, yellow. <laughs> so I scoured the internet. Okay, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I went to my research department and I asked them to find these images. No, I scoured the internet and I found these particular images of uh, just some visuals of the personality traits. And so, as you can see, the yellow personality trait, these are just some visual images that if these, um, if these appeal to you, <laughs> if you're like, ah, then this may be the personality that you have. So we have lots of family pictures on the wall. If you walk into this environment, whoever put those pictures up is a yellow. But remember, it's whoever put the pictures up. Because when you walk into a house, it could be a yellow mom and a red husband. And if you treat everybody as yellows, well, you're going to be in for a really big surprise. Okay. But generally, you can tell. Uh, another trait of yellows is that they are animal lovers and they're tree huggers. And uh, I would say they're singing kumbaya, but that offends some people. So I'm just going to say, we are all in this together. And if that statement, we are all in this together, appeals to you, then you are a primary, primarily a yellow. So let's talk about some of the traits. Write them down, some of these down. Take a snapshot of the screen if you want. But what's going to happen is I'm going to, if you send a um, request to me at charles at ninjasellsecrets.com, charles at ninjasellsecrets.com, if you send a request to me, you, you just gotta say, I want, I want the slide. If you know my, if you know my phone number, you can text me. If you, if you are in the Ninja text group, then you can just reply to the 474747 with, please send me the presentation. I'm going to give this presentation to you. All you gotta do is request it. All right, so here's some things about a yellow. Pay attention uh, if this isn't you because you're gonna need to identify uh, some images in a little bit. So here's just a snapshot of some of the aspects of a yellow. And I don't need these because I don't need to hear myself. Okay, I can hear myself right here. <laughs> so a yellow wants everyone to win, not just themselves, everyone. They love to be a friends and family. They love animals. Remember their favorite, one of their favorite words is ah. So if you, you know, want to know if you're dealing with the yellow, then break out a picture. Open your phone to a picture of your, of, of your, you know, your, your, your nephew or your dog or something and see what their response is. If it's ah, then you're talking to a yellow. Or if they do this, if they hug themselves, if they, if they touch their heart, those are yellows. You starting to get the picture? Yellows are also aren't afraid to cry. If you're a man and you're a yellow, be proud of the fact that you're not afraid to cry. You know, grown men cry too. And real men cry if you're yellow. If you're red, you ain't crying for jack, right? But we're talking about yellows right now. Um, yellows, here's an interesting uh, tale. Yellows try, when, when they shake hands, they use both hands generally you know it's more like hi you almost hug your hand so remember that and of course they would love to hug you right now it's kind of hard to tell a yellow because yellows are having a horrible time horrible time with the pandemic ah you know i know i think wanda's watching this right now and she's my sister-in-law and and wanda's a big yellow you know just all about these traits here and i know that when she sees her friends and family to not be able to hug them, oh, it's just got to be driving her bananas. And so let's, let's just remember, yellows are suffering right now. And it's really hard to be a yellow at this point. <laughs> okay. okay, let's talk about other traits. They do not care about competition. All right. And we all get to play together. They're the ones that want little Johnny to get a trophy and everyone else. If everyone else, you know, like, you know, six people on a team of 15 can't be the only ones that get a trophy. Everyone should win, okay? That's kind of how yellows think. They wear earth tones, and um, they also want to save the planet. Now, that's not just uh, a characteristic solely for yellows, but it's a big, big thing to yellows to save the planet because they want to hug the planet. <laughs> okay, here's the blues. Woohoo! A lot of you are.
are blue. And that's, these are some, uh, these are some visual traits of blues and we'll go over this super fast. So as, as a blue, you like to party. And that doesn't mean that you are a partier. It just means that if there is a party, you're more likely to join in and say, let's go have a good time. Because yellows, obviously the blues are kind of like, uh, are kind of like uh, Cindy Lauper, you know, girls just want to have fun. Blues just want to have fun. They just, you know, the, I have an expression, I'll tell it to you later, but you know, you see this word road trip and that's because blues are spontaneous. And if you uh, have a blue friend and you can literally say on Friday afternoon, hey, let's drive to San Francisco and a blue will go, okay, and forget about everything else that's going on and just jump in. So is that you? Are you spontaneous? Because if you are and you like parties and you like to have a good time and you're not afraid to sing and dance in an elevator, you are a blue. <laughs> you can always tell in the elevator, you know, me as a red, I sit, I stand there in the elevator and I can't wait for that door to open so I can get away from these people and go do what I got to do. But a blue listens to the song and just knows all the words to the song and, and all the words to the song. There it is right there. So let's move on. <laughs> Oops, let's go back here. So blues just want to have fun. They can't wait for the next party. We talked about that. They don't want to miss an opportunity to take an unexpected trip to Vegas. Woohoo! And uh, they'll also often be late because blues aren't really good at uh you know being really time driven so if a blue says i'm on my way they haven't even left yet if a blue says i'm almost there then they just got in their car if a blue says i'm five minutes away go ahead and order lunch <laughs> okay because that's just kind of how blues are they're often late and it's not they're doing it on purpose they just get distracted it's not so it's not such a big deal um, obviously, they love to hear music. They're not afraid to dance. Uh, they wear brighter colors. You saw that lady in the elevator, bright red. They like to wear brighter colors. Um, here's a big thing about blues in business. Blues are not detail oriented. They don't want lots of documentation. They don't want to see, like I have, I'm doing my taxes while I'm in a hotel room, right? They look at this, all these papers, and as they pretty much roll their eyes in the back of their head and they'd rather just call 911 because blues are not into paperwork. So if you have a document and you're in the sales process, the best thing to say to a blue, if you know you're dealing with the blue, is hey, I know you had a, probably got a great weekend planned ahead of you. I know you got a lot of things going on. I'm going to, I'm going to send you the document for you to sign and I'm just going to highlight the areas that you might, you know, want to pay attention to. If you want to read the whole document, that's fine, but I'm going to make it easier for you and just highlight a few areas that might be a real important. And then I just have a big yellow is where you sign. And literally you could sign because there's a 30 day, uh, you know, policy that you can change your mind, write a rescind and all that jazz. And so just, you know, sign it where I have the big X there or the big arrow and you'll be fine. You know what a blue who says to you, thank you. Thank you for not making me suffer, for not making me read every word. Now, there are some greens that are listening and watching this right now, and you are losing your mind. You're like, hail to the no. <laughs> so that's the opposite of a blue. But let's go ahead and, uh, um, oh, favorite blue phrase. Inside their head, they are saying, please do not kill my buzz. It took me a long time to get to this, you know, nirvana, this place where I'm not stressed out, where I'm like, mm, please don't kill my buzz. That's how blues look at the world. I know. Is this you? Are you, are you a person that, you know, everything was going fine until somebody said we had to, you know, document and write, you know, fill out these pieces of paper and uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, reds. There's only two left here, reds and greens. Reds, these are visual cues to a red personality. So reds love to be noticed, but they wanna be noticed as the top of the totem pole, as the one who's uh, crossing the finish line, as the person that, you know, really 
uh, will help everybody achieve greatness. That's what reds are. And so if you are a red, these pictures appeal to you. The guy with the beautiful house and the cars, you're like, yes, that's me. That's, that's who I want to be. If you, if you see, um, if you see, uh, you know, trophies and, and, and things that are just like, you can tell this person is special because of what's, you know, in their trophy case. Now, on the opposite of that, I'm, I'm looking at what everyone's saying here. On the opposite of that is the uh, a yellow, the opposite of red is yellow, and the yellows don't have trophy cases. They don't have displays like this. You know what yellows have on their wall? Yeah, pictures of their family, okay? You know what reds have on their wall? Pictures of their accomplishments. Think about that. Yellows have pictures of their family. It's in their office too. A yellow will have pictures of their family surrounding them on their desk in their office. Remember that. Reds will have certificates of achievement, awards, trophies, plaques, a picture of them, you know, on their football team in 1985. I mean, that's how reds are. So keep that in mind. And reds love to find things like fine watches. And I just want to point out this one picture in the bottom right hand corner here. Uh, this is a picture of someone who's very proud of an accomplishment. Now look at the accomplishment. It is the National Book Award finalist. Hmm. I don't know if I would be wearing that uh, medallion around like I'm really something special, but to a red, it doesn't matter. They won that award. They're just playing that award. Get it? Okay, here we go. Last one. Oh, let me talk about more about reds. They uh, want to win almost. Please remember that word. They want to win almost at all costs. They, you know, they just want to win and they'll do more than others to win. They're highly competitive. Obviously, I talked about the plaques and trophies and watches and clothes and things like that. Um, when you're talking to a red, you need to get to the point fast. You need to cut to the chase. You need to get to the, what is the bottom line? Because a red does not have patience like a, a yellow. A red does not have patience like any of the other colors do. A red is already gone. They were, they were watching this presentation and they're already gone. All I have left are the greens, the blues, and the yellows right now. <laughs> But that's okay. Reds, you can come back and read this and just download it and you'll get to you'll get all this information because you already know everything. Right? Right. Okay, they love the name drop. So think about that when you're talking to a red and you're in your first conversation uh, in a business transaction. If the red starts dropping names, yeah, I was just hanging out with so and so, and you're like, wow, so and so, I'm very impressed. That's what a red wants to hear. He wants to know that they are impressing you with their um, achievements and their relationships, and their associations, those type of things. Okay, um, they know what's best. They know more than pretty much anybody. I know you're thinking of some people right now in your life that you're like, ah, that's why that person is this way. They're a red. Well, um, reds at least, well, we, we have lots of qualities, but one of our qualities is we are on time. We, we are not late unless it is fashionable to be late. If you know, uh, we're supposed to have a big party and it's at, you know, this nice estate and it starts at 7.30. Well, we're going to drive up at, set, at eight o'clock so that you can see our nice car as it drives up the driveway. <laughs> That's how reds do it. Okay. Greens, the last one, but not the least one. I thought these pictures were pretty entertaining. And so I grabbed them. Greens like to read. They are not afraid of of words, they will read the biggest book known to mankind. And so I Googled large book and this is what showed up. And so I just had to put it out there. Now, I mean, to a green, they're like, yeah, bring it on, man. Back up the truck that drops that book off of my house, right? Greens love documentation. So they're not afraid of that picture of tax forms. To a green, those tax forms are just, oh, thanks for giving me all this detail so that I know exactly what to do. They read the instructions. They are meticulous. They will make sure that all words are spelled correctly. Remember that. If, so, if someone starts correcting your spelling without really no need to, I mean, it, it's, it's not that big of a deal. We're not in college here. That's a green. You're dealing with a green. And so, uh, greens, look at that lady on the bottom left. She's pointing at the clock. Why? Greens 
remember. Greens, remember what you said. If you said, I will be there at five o'clock, at 5.02, you are late and you are a liar. Greens want the facts. They want you to be factual, punctual, on time, whatever. If you say, I'll be there, you know, 5.30, then get there at 5.25 and that's okay, but you still didn't make it there at 5.30. And have you ever been in a situation where someone says, well, I mean, you know, you are five minutes early. You said 5.30, you're thinking, oh, it's early. That would be great. No, no, the way to impress a green is to show up exactly at the time. So if you have a business meeting with a green and uh, you know they're a green, if what's really impresses them is to say, you know, I should be at, your office or I should be at the Starbucks at approximately, you can say approximately, at approximately 6.03 p.m. Make sure you say p.m. p.m. 6.05, 6, uh, 6.22. Oh my gosh, that, that precision, that preciseness, they love that, especially if you walk in exactly when you said you would. Woo, you won that deal already because they love that punctuality. Um, they love that factuality. They love you not to be a liar and arrive at 625 when you said 623. This is a car. Now, you might think that uh, greens aren't so much into cars like reds are, but a green wants an efficient car, wants a computerized car, likes computerized refrigerators, like, you know, the technology. They're not afraid of technology. And they, they're the only ones that know how to make their their watch do all that cool fun stuff you know and so this is a tesla this is not a car this is a tesla and a tesla is what a green loves you'll you'll see okay so really quickly detail oriented they verify everything you say so if you um say you know um i was reading the other day and it turns out that 33 percent of x has y they will especially if they're on the phone they will go while you're talking and Google it and see that, oh, that's interesting. It says 30%. Oh, that's interesting. You said the wrong state. You got to be right on the money. If you're going to quote something, better be accurate because they're going to go to their research department, which is the internet, and find out for sure. They know the difference. Big one here, guys. I know this is going to, this is a little bit longer, but these are so important. You'll need to watch this over and over. A big one here. They know the difference between a claim and a fact. Our product, like in my sanitization company, our product kills 99.999% of the germs and viruses that cause COVID-2 and some other germs and microbes. Now, that sounds really precise, but when they look it up and they see that I missed a nine, I'm not telling the truth that it was a claim that wasn't a fact. We claim to be 99.99, but the fact is you're 99%. Big difference. So remember, claims. We, um, we promise that you will love this product. That's a claim. That's not a fact. Um, our, our products are 30% uh, stronger than the competition. Well, that's a claim. That's not a fact. I can find something that your product is 20% stronger and I can find your product is 50% stronger. Remember, greens know the difference between claims and facts and they will catch you on that. So when I deal with the green, I make sure I give them facts, not claims. All right, we have to be on time. Cost is important. I have here this, this presentation I pulled from is about eight years old and I say they love Toyota Priuses. They have graduated to <laughs> the Tesla. All right, moving on. So here we go. We're about ready. We're already, man, how far are we? We're 28. Okay. We're already at to the fun part. Vigilance. What is the definition of vigilance? Vigilance is the process of paying close attention and continuous attention. Hmm. Close and continuous. We must be vigilant when we're looking at the people that we're talking to, when we walk into an office, when we're when we are especially on Zoom, when you see the background of someone on Zoom, pay attention, be vigilant, continuous attention. The uh, faculty of power of mental concentration, keeping track of all of the details requires your complete attention. This, this is a definition of vigilance, the trait of being observant and paying attention. All of this, 
this is for all of you, for all of your colors, whether you're yellow, blue, red, or green, be vigilant. And so I thought I'd throw the definition out there. Okay, words to listen for. I'm, I already talked about them. I'm gonna go through this really fast. Yellows love the word love. <laughs> um, they love together, family, ah, ah, beautiful, wonderful. These are words that you can input into your conversation, especially if you know the color you're dealing with and they, it kind of rings bells, right? Wonderful, unite, neutral, those are words. Now reds, the word must, the word over, you know, over exaggerate, over accomplishment, okay? Uh, this will destroy the competition. Woo, reds are like, yeah, baby, right? Uh, best, superior, dominate, luxury, bright, win, make it happen. Those are words that reds love. These are words you can start to inject into your conversation, but you must know the personality you are dealing with before you say these words. Okay, blue, they love the word awesome. They still love that word awesome. Uh, no sweat, easy peasy, those kind of words. They like that. They like to be, they like words that are creative. Listen for, we, let's, let's come up with a creative solution to this challenge. Ooh, I like creative. Yeah, see, think about that. Style move, um, craft, you know, this, you're going to have a blast. Huh. Now, greens, I have question marks here because greens will be the one that says that uh, uh, that uh, Jedi mind trick will not work with me. <laughs> greens have already read this, right? Greens know uh, that you are trying to say words. And with me, when I try to say words that I think will appeal to a green, I just pretty much laugh at myself because they know I don't know the definition of the word anyway. It happens all the time. I can tell you about 20 conversations I've had in the last two days where I could just see the green looking at me like, good try, little Charles, but that is not the right word. <laughs> and so I let them know, look, I'm, I am not a wordsmith. And then they're like, you don't even know what wordsmith means. <laughs> Okay, let's have some fun. Let's get rolling here. Let's let's learn how ninja you are. Hmm. Ninja, you say you are. Hmm. I know that's Yoda, but whatever. Okay, so <laughs> I thought this picture was pretty cool. I love kids. All right. Ninja, bam. Here is an office environment. You will see pictures of office environments, and I'm going to ask you to identify what type of personality might be the one in this office. Now remember, I did this, I, I said at the top of this presentation, you wanna know what to say and what not to say, okay? So we're gonna talk about that a little bit as we go through here because there are things that I call the last thing, right? The last thing you wanna say in this environment is, right? So just keep that in mind as we go through these uh, different environments, and uh, we're going to have some fun here. I, I got some well-known peeps that you're going to learn some things about just by looking at their office environment. Doesn't that sound fun? I think that sounds great. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. This is an office environment that uh, is a real person's office. This is a real, this is not, not a showing. This is a real person. Let me give you another piece of what this real person's office looks like. Oh my gosh, that's also in their office. It's off to the side. So they have this pristine office, which you would think they must be green. And then behind them on the side is this trophy case. That is a person that you might say to yourself, hmm, a little bit mixed up. No, remember, we are rainbows. And so we need to combine these personalities that are in our head and we and, and and we we kind of display them. For instance, I'm a red yellow, and so I, you know, when my kids were playing high school football, I was the guy in the stands going, "Kill them, kill them, crush them, you know, destroy them." And then when they tackle this kid, and it looks like they broke the kid's arm or something, I'm like, "Oh my god, I hope he's okay. Is he okay?" <laughs> so I, both of those personalities come out, and so you just got to understand who you are, and even more importantly, who you aren't. So who is this person? Well, this is this person, Ellen DeGeneres. She is not conflicted. She is combined. She is red and green. So everything has its place. Every 
everything has its place, even in that trophy case. You look at people on TV these days and you look behind them, we all do, and you ask yourself, why is it so cluttered? Or you ask yourself, wow, or you say to yourself, wow, that's, that's very neatly or, you know, organized and there's a reason why everything is where it is, okay? So things to think, I'm starting you guys off gentle, okay? So this was or is a person who is green and red. Why do you say red, Charles? Look at that trophy case. <laughs> All those Emmys are sitting there in display, not missing one of them. And when there was no room in the trophy case, she put it on the outside of the shelf. She ain't gonna let you miss an Emmy. She's done that, okay? So now you're getting the picture. Let's move on. Okay, here is a general office environment. And the, just so you know, the office manager, the one in charge is the black guy there with his suspenders. And so you ask you if you were just to see him in the elevator, maybe. I don't know, the elevator wouldn't be a good place. If you saw him in the parking lot, because if you saw him in the elevator, you kind of give him away. If you saw him in the parking lot, he may, you may think, wow, that guy, you know, Poindexter kind of look, he is a green. I need to be very detail oriented. I need to make sure that we're factual and punctual and blah, blah, blah. But he's the one that said, let's have a party at, uh, you know, 1130 in the morning. <laughs> okay. You have to be vigilant continuously looking at the personality, continuously getting information in, weeding out things that aren't, that, that don't pertain and collecting things that do. So you walk in and you see, he also has the biggest smile on his face. He loves the fact that he can entertain and get his coworkers drunk at 1130. But hey, we just doing this for educational purposes. All right, so pay attention. This gets harder as it goes along. All right, we all know this lovely lady here. And so if I was to ask you, what color is Oprah Winfrey? Hmm, what color is Oprah, Oprah Winfrey? Well, she's gotta be red. I mean, she's like the richest lady or richest person in the world. I mean, she's gotta be. And then you look at her pictures behind her and what do you see on her shelf so that that's in her box, right? What do you see is you see family pictures. Family, family, family. Okay. Hmm. Oprah is primarily a yellow, not a red. Mm hmm. Want me to prove it? Okay. There's another office. That's her home office. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> now I don't see one trophy. I don't see one Emmy. I don't see one award. And Oprah has plenty, but none to show in her box. All right. Oprah is a yellow and a red. Okay. And a blue, right? I think she's actually yellow, blue, red. So you, actually, I'm looking at this picture here. Look, what's next to her? A nice little glass of champagne, maybe, or something. I'm going to say she's a, she's a uh, yellow, blue. Oh, wow, I would have picked Oprah to be exactly the opposite. Mm. Pay attention, pay attention, grasshopper. You're gonna learn something here. I told you things will change, this will change everything. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna look at the people around you differently. You're gonna interact with people around you and you're gonna, you're gonna ask yourself, ah, I really assumed that this person was a blue, but I now realize this person is a yellow. Hmm, gotta treat them different, okay. All right, walk into this office, and uh, I've seen plenty of offices like this, especially when they ask me to wait in the office, and they'll be in in a few minutes. Well, if I sit down in this office and I see that beautiful leather chair, not just a mesh chair, this is a very expensive leather chair and everything else. And what is the biggest thing on the wall? It is his memory of being on this soccer team back in the 80s. <laughs> That tells you, okay? Yeah, there's a picture of his family, a couple down the bottom, you know, but there's trophies and plaques everywhere. This person is a red. Maybe yellow is second, but I don't know for sure, but I definitely know this person is a red. Hmm, how am I gonna treat them? A little bit different, okay. Oh boy, Charles, you would throw in one of these. Of course I'm gonna throw in these pictures. As a matter of fact, I got President Trump, Vice President Pence, maybe the next President Biden, and Kamala Harris. See how I said that? I'm 
trying to be nice so I don't lose it all real fast. Okay, combination of two. See that at the top there? Combination of two. What color is Trump? You would have thought that Trump was a red, period, 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 exclamation point. But when you look at his office, this is a picture of his office, Manhattan office. He wasn't president at this time, but this is his office. He was proud to sit behind this desk. What do you see? Hmm, clutter. I see clutter and I see trophies and I see family. Hmm. So here is when you would actually do process of elimination to know exactly what he isn't. So at least you don't say the wrong thing. And at least you have an inkling of what he is so you can say the right things. So if I was in this office, I would not pay attention to detail. I would not give him large documents to look at and read. I would, I, I, I would not do things that are factual and punctual. I would not have a problem making claims because he's not green. He doesn't mind hearing claims over facts. Oh, Charles, you are being political. Well, I'm just sharing how valuable this could be when you look at these pictures. Hmm, very interesting. There's Vice President Pence, a little bit younger day, but there's his office. He is not like Trump, okay? There is green in his background. I mean, everything has its place. It is extremely neat. That is the smallest, thinnest desk you can have. <laughs> it's like this wide. And it still has room for his family. You have to look deeper. You have to be vigilant. So we see that everything has its place, but his family is right in front of him. Even on the other side of the computer, those are family pictures, okay? This person is a green and then a yellow. Or a person could be a yellow than a green, right? But I'm going to say this person is a green yellow. What this person is not is a blue or a red. Huh, interesting. This person is not about having fun, okay? This person does, does care about where everything is and how it looks and how neat everything is. I mean, look at his hair. <laughs> No comment. All right, let's move on. Of course, I have Mr. Biden. There's his office. Huh, I would say Mr. Biden is very similar to Mr. Pence. Mm, they actually would get along just fine. In my opinion, everything has its place. It's fairly neat. Um, got pictures of his family there. There's not trophies or, you know, things that you have done to impress other people. This is not a, a, an environment to impress people. Reds have an environment to impress people. I used to have a picture of a Ted Cruz's office. Oh my God. There's huge flags all around him and this great big bull. And I mean, just, just, just Google him and you'll, you'll realize, wow, now that's a red. Okay. So, these are just to help you, okay? This person is a green, possibly green, yellow, right? That, you know, there's not a lot of pictures of the family, it's just his wife. And you would think that if, uh, I mean, you need to see more pictures, but I would think that if I was in, if I was in my, uh, excuse me, if I was in Joe Biden's office and I'd look around, I'd wanna see tons of pictures of his sons and his wife who died all of that, because that's kind of the impression that he puts out. But if there's just one or two, that might be just to impress you. Hmm, need a little more information. Be vigilant, start reading out the things that don't pertain and start looking at what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, there's Kamala. I thought I'd go one of her. Remember I was talking about Ted Cruz, him being a big red, you know, making sure that his environment is impressive. Well, there's Kamala. I'd say that's a pretty impressive environment. All that, you know, just it just screams red, okay? And, 
and there is some green because that desk is not cluttered. I've seen cluttered desks, and I'm going to show you a cluttered desk. So this person is not about really having a lot of fun. Mm -mm. This person is red and green. What don't you see there? You don't see the family. <gasps> Wait, Charles, you're right. No, you don't see pictures. You don't see the picture of her husband and her, and her kids right there in front of her because she's a red. I don't have pictures of my family in front of me neither. It's not that we don't love them. It's just that we don't use them to impress you. It's our family, it's not yours. So, you know, that's something to pay attention to. Pay attention to what's not there as well as what is there. Hopefully this is really resonating with some of you. Here's Kamala. And I love it when they have their name right there in front of their face. Like, uh, you should know who I am. I don't need my name tag right there in front of Kamala Harris. Come on. You're in Kamala's office. Maybe just to get the spelling right. I don't know. Okay, moving right along. You know, don't you don't see any uh you don't see any sodas, you don't see uh anything that's fun, you don't you don't see um, you know, you just don't see things about the environment and, and uh, you know, this whole, you know, like, like, like Oprah has pictures of her dog in her office, okay? So there's the difference. All right, let's have some more fun. We're almost done. Red, blue, yellow, green, what color are you? Please go back through the presentation, ask me to send it to you. I'm happy to give you a link to it. And ask yourself, what color are you? And it's okay to be, red blue it's okay to be yellow red it's okay to be a piece of each one right a lot of you are going to say i got a little bit of all of them yeah i get that but what are your primary colors that's where it really makes sense so with that i wanted to uh be able to do question and answer but since i'm doing this from my phone and from this office i really don't have good uh, access to everyone's questions and answers while this is going on. I'm gonna try one more time here on the recording. It's not gonna, we're not gonna have that on the recording, but let's just see if I, I can get there. Do, 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 do. All right, there they are reacting to my video. Ninja Cell Secrets, there's Teresa, James, Denise. Okay, so if you guys have questions, you can post them um, here, but uh, I just don't have the right screens to, uh, to answer them. So what I'm going to do is, if you have questions, post them, and then I will answer them right in the post. And uh, we can just kind of leave this up for a while. And if you are new to Ninja Sales Secrets, then you may not have gotten the book, Ninja Sales Secrets. So I was going to grab the book from underneath my laptop, but you can see it right there, okay? Go get the book. It's $9, all right? It has 20 easy to read, best known secrets that a lot of people don't know. <laughs> and uh, you just need to go to uh, buycharlesbook.com, buycharlesbook.com. Or you can go to ninjasecrets.com. Either way, you're gonna get right to the place where you can order an autographed copy of the book.